Good morning and welcome to BGC Mitzvah Day number 123, part 9. Mitzvah Day keeps us on its way. Use the Sefer Chinuch. And again, this mitzvah is entitled The Obligation of the Ola for your Offering. And yes, it's a doozy, but we're getting through it. Probably two more parts and we'll be done. Let's go right away. Here we go. So, we said the Chinuch contrasts this with the law governing the standard Chatas liability for other violations and provides the scriptural source for this difference. We mentioned that part yesterday. Here we go. This law does not exist regarding other kores, again, spiritually cut off, or other dying gun, young, God forbid, losing a child. That's what chorus means. This law does not exist regarding other chorus bearing transgressions in the Torah. For with regard to other chorus bearing transgressions, as long as one knew the circumstances of the transgression at the end, i.e. after he committed it, even if he did not know these circumstances originally, before he committed the sin, he is liable to bring a fixed chatas offering. Scripture mandates to rule this way here with regard to tumah violations, impure violations, for it is written regarding the tumah violations of the temple and its consecrated foods, but it became concealed from him, which indicates that there was a period at the beginning before his transgression when he did not know. And after he had known it, the matter became concealed for him, meaning that he experienced a period of unawareness. Thus, the verse indicates that there was an initial period of awareness followed by a period of unawareness. And it is stated afterward, and then he became aware, indicating a final period of awareness. You thus learn that in order for liability to be incurred, there must be awareness at the beginning and awareness at the end, with a period of unawareness in between. However, regarding other cars bearing transgressions, for which one must bring a chatas, a sin offering, when he commits the transgression inadvertently, it is written, if an, indiv if an individual person from among the people of the land shall sin inadvertently by committing one of the commandments of Hashem that may, meet, that may not be done, and he becomes guilty, if his sin that he committed becomes known to him, he shall bring as his offering, etc. That is to say, he is liable to bring a chatas, a sin offering, as long as he knew the circumstances of the sin at the end, after he committed it, even if he was not aware of those circumstances originally, before the transgression. For it does not state there, quote, and it was concealed from him, from which we would derive that there had been awareness originally. I know this is a little tricky, folks. It's tricky, it is. As explained, the Ola Vayurid offering for Tuma violations, again, impure violations, is brought only when one had a specific order of awareness and unawareness, first awareness, then forgetting, and then becoming aware again. One who committed an inadvertent Tuma violation, but without these specific steps, can gain atonement through certain communal offerings, primarily those of Yom Kippur. And we'll stop here. God will continue tomorrow and finish. Maybe we'll finish. We'll see. Thanks for listening. Response feature Mitzvah 36100 for the goal. We'll see you.